Last time I was single, I was 24, and the dating pool was everyone. And now it's like a shallow puddle of age-appropriate men who are old and gross, and I don't want to do that. How did I have the courage? Gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well. Um, we have another compilation for you. Um, this one is on dating after divorce. And before I get into it, I have to put in a little clip it there at the start of the video. My God, that one sound clip that's like, you know, oh, the dating pool is full of old men now. Well, yeah, now that you've um, gained your time and age, um, it's going to be exactly what you'd expect. You have to get used to things. Um, and the dating pool is not going to be kind for you, as I think we're going to have <laughs> plenty of uh, backup here for that point in this video. Let's get to it. ...to date again after a very toxic marriage. How could I put myself out there and trust other people again with my heart? I got this question recently, and I think there's a point to be made here. This isn't about me trusting other people. This is about me trusting myself. Trusting the fact that if there's somebody that's trying to get into my life and share my time and they are not good enough for me, I trust that I will make the decision to kick them. That clarity came from me taking the time to learn about exactly who I am, what I want, and making sure that anybody that comes in my life will be nothing less than that. I trust me now. I trust that I will make those good decisions for myself. I would rather be alone in peace than give up any of my happiness or peace just to be with somebody else. With information comes power, and now I have all the information I need. I have all the education I need to make sure that I stay the fuck away from red flags. So get clear on what you want in a relationship and settle for absolutely nothing less. And as soon as I did that... Yeah, you sound like an absolute peach. Oh, what an angry woman. I guess that's what the whole divorce grinder <laughs> ends up being. Um, yet men will be shamed for being angry about how their divorce went. Uh, what else do you have to say? Come on. That, I found the man of my dreams. Who communicates with me exactly the way that I want. Who gives the affection exactly the manner in which I want to receive it. So don't give up. Just get clear on who you are and settle for nothing less, because you deserve the best. I'm gonna roll out. Mm, that sounds very controlling. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> nobody's going to give you 100% of what you want, as much as we try for that. Um, <laughs> there have to be compromises in life, but I feel like this uh, man that she's with is probably going to realize what a peach she is, and they'll probably end up moving on from each other. Let's get into the next one. My stability ball, and we're going to have a talk about why I don't do 50-50. Some of y'all are focused on, on the wrong things. When it comes to the relationship situation, if you want to do 50-50, fine. But here's what I know. There's no such thing as a 50-50 relationship. Let's be honest with you. What, how much effort do women put into the relationship compared to men? Answer down in the comments. I don't have time to count calories, nor do I want to count calories. You know, like when you're like getting ready to do your fitness thing, the idea of counting calories kind of grosses you out because you know how much mental energy and time it's going to take you to every single time you stop to eat. You have to think about it and track it and put it in the phone. Yeah, so that... Or you could just simply eat the same thing six days out of the week or seven days out of the week and not think about it. Really simple. Uh, bodybuilders, you know what I'm talking about, or at least people that care about their health. That's like the most unsexy thing to me ever in a relationship is the thought of counting everything that you each other are doing for each other. 
but I'm also a very wise and savvy woman, and I negotiate the shit out of everything I do. And what I pay attention to the most is my risk management. And this is about... And I feel like you would be fired. <laughs> it's gross, but men just completely lose count, yet anytime that they do something, it's just like, oh my god, I'm the best person in the relationship. Screw off. Understanding huh. how much risk is on my side of the table and how much risk is on his side of the table, because in love, there is always risk, but... That shit does not need to be lopsided. There is a huge difference between him coming over here more often and eating more of my groceries because I'm a single mom, which requires him to be here more often, and me moving into a house with him where my name is not on the title. See the difference? Me being the one to reach out to him more often because I have the kids and he has no idea where I'm at in my parenting requires me to communicate more effectively on my parenting weeks. I'm not expecting that shit 50-50. Versus me having three kids, having someone move in, and then all of a sudden now I'm navigating conversations between a so, a step, whatever, and my children and their feelings about it and my feelings about it. Like, how much emo emotional risk do I need to take on? Risk is usually where we get tripped up. We're more than happy to have a man provide the dates, take you out, buy you nice things. But then what ends up happening is you'd actually take on the real risk, which is when you sell all your shit and you move in. And now you don't have anything of your own and your name isn't on the house and you don't have anything like that you're legally entitled to. That, my friend, is risk I'm not willing to take. I'm not willing to risk my children's well-being and comfortability to try out a social experiment relationship after divorce. These are major risks that you're taking. It's why I love living apart together so much, because I can manage the risk effectively in my own life. It's not about 50-50. It's about risk. We cover all of these mindset shifts in Money Before Men, and you can find it in my profile. Love you. Bye. What up? Hey. <laughs> what up, sugar tits? How oh, funny. Um, hopefully that's going to be an interesting one, but that one had a lot in it, too, uh, where... Of course, she only thinks about the risks that women take, and obviously there's a risk in men inviting women into their lives, you know? And I think you understand what exactly that is, but, you know, if you don't, um, it's common law. Uh, and then in the case where you're inviting a single mother with children into your household, I just wonder what the heck is up with that. Um, we talk about risk plenty, and just... Don't put yourself in situations like that and you'll have a better life. I think that finding somebody who has that similar mindset of uh, being together yet living apart is actually pretty damn swell. Because uh, I'm, I'm aware of the risk there and I'm even considering that in my own life. But hey, what do you know? Let's move on. What's this one? <laughs> Starting off with what's up, sugar tits. That's great. Sugar tits, let's get into it. I am trying to figure out a date. I was in a relationship for eight years. I was actually married, and I found out my partner was cheating on me my whole relationship. So obviously I get divorced. I'm trying to enter the dating world. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, and so I'm here exposing myself. Hopefully someone can take a nugget. Just want to put it out there. I started a podcast. It's pretty litty titties. It's called Io Within, and I'm also hosting a retreat to help you find your soul family. So let's dive in. Dating now. What the hell is a soul family? <laughs> yeah, this this woman's a little uh refrewer, loopy or whatever. I I don't get it. Moving on. Bro, like come on, dating apps. I am realizing this pattern with myself that if I am bored, I get on a dating app just to feel validated. Do I meet up with these people? No, absolutely not. And do I actually try to have a conversation with these people? No, not really. But I do notice that if they have their IG name, I'll go search their IG name and kind of like a couple of their photos and see if they'll sign in my DMs. And if they do, that's when we'll start talking. But do I still meet up with them? No. So it's so crazy that I am engaged in this cycle of seeking attention, not taking action, seeking attention, not taking action. And it's like, why do I do this? Is it because I'm scared to be alone and I need- Because you're a loser. Let's all be completely honest with you. This is absolute loser behavior. You're wasting people's time because you are insecure and not valid in yourself. And your divorce um, 
clearly put you through some emotional damage. Like, let's face it. Oh, so bad for anybody that's been on the damaged end of this one stick. This reminder that I am worthy, or is this just a new world? Is this how we meet people? But the thing is, is actually I meet other people, you know, at the gym. Like most of the people I go on dates with, I meet in real life. And so it's like, what is the point of dating apps if you don't really meet up? Why am I on them? They also make me feel like I am not pretty enough because I... What? You go on there for validation and you still don't feel like enough. What is wrong with you? Oh my gosh. I'm like, oh man, this is the first picture they're going to see. Do I look good enough? You know, all this aspects. It's quite interesting. Uh, what, what's everyone's opinion on this like dating app thing? Like, is there a strategy to it? Why do we use it? Do you really, is it worth meeting up with people? Because like my thing too is, is like, are you getting in the way of the universe? introducing you to people because you're foreseeing relationships just based off of looks off of social media and like an app thoughts thoughts you need help and your divorce was clearly a ringer for you and taking that out on the people that you meet because you're not enough how sad really how sad um you're probably not going to find somebody that'll fix you but you need fixing lady I don't know what else to say. Maybe you've uh, smoked too much. Something's wrong up there. But enough, enough of this. Um, I'm going to go take a breather and get on to making the next video for you, all that I'll have ready in a couple of days. Thank you for watching this, and I hope that you have a great day. Avoid women that you like this, that you've seen. Um, get the plague. I, I don't know what else to say. Always do your due diligence, and we'll chat soon. Bye for now.